The Lord has been reminding us lately of this book and the teachings are from the book you need to bring your book Amen. you need to bring your book because there's a continuity when you read the scripture in context and you are um, excluding the moving of the Holy Spirit through the reading because sometimes you back up and read a scripture that changes your life. Yeah, that's right. So uh, this is the imperishable sacred word of God. That's what the Revised Standard Version says at the end of Mark. The sacred and imperishable word of God. And we could tell you story after story of churches in China and other places where they only had one page of this. And they started a church and people fed off of one page of the Gospel of John. It's all they had. And they held it so special that God grew and moved in that church from one page until someone we know went with a sack full of Bibles all the way to China. They thought it was like directly from heaven. We, we need to honor this so much. We, we need to have a reverence and an honor yes. for the sacred yes. and imperishable Word of God, which is able to change the whole world. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you as disciples to do two things. If you don't have a Bible, get one. Get one, check out the translations, find one that speaks to you. I use the New King James or the Revised Standard. But find one that's, that you can read and don't you ever let it go. Yeah, amen. That's right. Yeah. Because what if there's nobody anywhere but you and your Bible? And it's up to you to spread this word accurately. Paul says to Timothy, prove yourself to be a workman. Be a workman approved of God, able to handle, and I love the word handle, the, the sacred word of God. Prove, prove it to God that you are able to handle this book. We've got the whole book. I've got multiple translations. People have perished just to get a, one Bible. Let, let's give honor where honor is due to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. So did you get that? Yes, sir. Bring your Bibles. Mm -hmm. Get one if you don't have one. Make it yours. Don't ever let it go. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to continue with teaching number five from the sacred word of God. On the renewed mind. And, and, and I'm going to finish up the voices teaching. And then I'm going to go into God's design build. God's design and build. How to design and build. Just having the design of God to build in your mind. The mind of Christ. Amen. You know, they have that term in the, in the architectural world. And around here, there's multiple consultants and firms that we say, we're design build. Just come to us. We'll help you design it and then we'll build what, what you want. So today I'd like to go into that. And let's go over some of our key scriptures, which is Ephesians 4.23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Say that. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So that's Ephesians 4.23. And then there is the Romans 12, which is... Anybody remember the Romans 12 scripture? This is the main scripture for the entire teaching. 
Please, people, you memorize things all the time. You can tell me advertisements on the radio and on the television. You can say all kinds of things from Google. Say this one thing. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. Come on, let's say it together. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's 12.2. Uh, that is the key scripture. Be transformed. Now, lots of things can change us. Yeah. Worship will change me. The word reading will change me. Prayer will change me. But the Bible says there is one thing that will transform me. Yeah. And that's the renewing of my mind. If my mind if, uh, doesn't get renewed, those other things will only influence me. They will not transform me. Very important. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind and the rest of the scripture, which, we'll, we, which is important, we won't go into teaching today, so that you can, approve, you can prove what God's good will is for you. How many people would like to know God's will for their lives at any given moment? Okay. You will not, according to the word, and cannot really find that out until you have a renewed mind. Because you'll look at the will of God for your life with, a, with, a, with an old mindset. And you'll go, oh, I can never do that, or oh, that'll never happen, or oh, that was just a daydream, when it was really God speaking to you, but you didn't have a renewed mind, and you didn't know how to hear God mentally, and you miss it. So remember the process. This is just a quick review here. For anybody who's missed any of these, what's the three-step process of the mind renewal? First is... Let me tell you the last one. Return. What's the first one? What? Learn. And what's the middle? Missing for the $50,000 question. What's the middle? Discern. We're going to start with that one today. We're teaching on each one of these. This is the process to renew your mind. First, you have to find out you have a mind. Yeah. And then you have to find out that you have the mind of Christ. Yes, amen. If you have been reborn of the Spirit and you have received Jesus as your, as your Lord and Savior and you, want, you have a desire to follow Him and to get to know Him and the wonderful things that He said and did, then if you don't learn that, you'll never know that you could have a new mind. You actually have the new mind and this process is getting it to be the ascendant the ascendant mind. It's going to be foremost and your old mind is going to be where it belongs, dead. Because the crucified Jesus has given us a brand new mind. But we're the ones that have to walk this out by his power. So the first thing about discerning is we can discern what we are thinking and hearing if it's from God by its emotions. So write that down. Every thought has an emotion. That's a psychological fact. Every thought has an emotion. You may be blocking it out, but it's there. What we are thinking and hearing, is it from God? Is this from you, Lord? Well, what you do is, does it have the fruit of one of the fruit, fruits of love? Does it bring peace, which was brought up this morning? When you're thinking something, or when a thought pattern comes in, or when you're musing, or meditating, or pondering, all these words we use, is it bring up a feeling of love, joy, or peace? If not, that's not how God speaks. How can the Prince of Peace, Jesus, speak in anything but peace? Because He is peace. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How about, is it forgiving? It, does it have acceptance and forgiveness for myself and for God in it? Or is it agitated? Is it disruptive? Is it, does it bring up an anxiety? That's an easy one, right? Yeah. You think about different situations, and down inside you start to feel tight. Mm -hmm. Right? Well... Friends, that's not God. That's not His voice. 
He wants to give the solution for that anxiety and not have you repeat the anxiety. So finally, another, I'm just giving you a few here. Is it, judge, is it full of judgments? Is it judging yourself? Oh, that was stupid of you. Why, why did I do that? I'm so stupid. Whoa, wait just a minute. God doesn't make stupid things. That's right. You need a renewed mind. That's not God speaking. That's another voice. And that's the voice that we need to discern. We are learning to discern the voice of God and being renewed in our mind. So let's quickly go through a couple of other voices, and then I want to move on to something else. But I, two weeks ago, I began to uh, speak on the voice. Remember the voice of the past? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Voice of the past. That voice of the past has to come through the cross before it can get to your brain. So we have the past, and we have your beautiful, God-given, wonderfully beautiful brain, but right there in the middle is the cross. You can't erase your past and you can't unforget your past, but the voices of the past bringing those negative emotions die at the cross and your job is to make sure the cross is between those voices and you. As I said, you can't erase history, but you can take the, the dark anointing off of it and impact of it out of your life. You can drain the poison root if, if, it's, if it's formed a root in your life. The voices that we obey, just to remind you, rule us. They set up a government over us. Thought patterns. You know, you're familiar with some of your own. You're familiar with other people. You bring up a subject and it's like, oh no, here they go again. That is a stronghold built up over time by Satan. That is a government. And you obey it if you listen to it. Because you will hear it and then you will follow it. Jesus is supposed to have the government for us. Jesus is supposed to have the kingdom for us. I love the scripture, Hebrews 1, 12, 1, 1 and 2. In these last days, God has spoken to everyone by his son. The son is speaking to us. He's the sounding word. So it's his voice that is going to speak to us through everything. He's going to speak to us through the Holy Spirit. He's going to speak to us through uh, sacred scripture. He's going to speak to us through dreams. Anybody have dreams in God? From God? You'll know when you have one. He'll speak to us through visions. He'll speak to us through angels. He'll, he'll speak to us through the burning bush like he spoke to Moses. And he may speak to you with direct speech. I know some people have occasionally heard a, vo a literal voice. And he'll speak to us through creation. So these are all how the Son is speaking to us in these last days. I'd like to go to, to two voices today that I didn't get to. One is the voice of the world. Cultural bombardment. Constantly forming thought patterns that are all based on lies. Dress this way. Do this. Aren't you supposed to think this? Don't say that. Say this. Be this. Be that. The world culture will kill you. The kingdom culture will resurrect you. God is here to establish a kingdom culture for us to think in kingdom ways, 
in possibilities, in creative, loving ways, with power. Jesus called Satan who he was, the father of lies, and everything he says is based on a lie. Don't ever believe or listen to the culture because it is does not have Christ in it. Parts of it do, do but I'm talking about pop culture. It's against Christ. And Paul says is the whole the world is under the power of the evil one. Now not if, not if you're in Christ and in the kingdom because he's already been defeated. But we have to be careful not to let that in as a government and, and build, a, build a culture in our brain. Mm -hmm. We want to build a kingdom culture. The, the last voice I'd like to talk about is the voice of your human spirit. And this is really, really, really important. Your spirit, Jesus speaking into your spirit, is, is the primary way he wants to communicate to everyone to come out of your spirit and blossom into your heart and mind, your brain and your thoughts. We have the capacity to hear God, Psalm 40, verse 6. We have the capacity to hear Him. We've been born with that. What are some of the ways that our human spirit speaks to us? How about our conscience? That's a main, talked about in the Word of God all the time, the conscience 1 Timothy 1.5, the end of all of this instruction of love is a good conscience. Good meaning, I am my con I'm listening to my conscience. It's pure, it's not hardened, it's not seared, it's not wounded, it's not, my, it's not a, a, a false conscience. It doesn't have aberrations in it. My conscience is telling me, yes, my conscience is arising saying, don't do that. Mm -hmm. This is good, that's unjust. Oh, this is righteous. Mm -hmm. Your conscience is talking all the time. Mm -hmm. So we need to become more sensitive to that. Another way our human spirit uh, sp speaks to us is really, really through intuition. How many people are intuitive? Mm -hmm. Get these intuitions about things. That is the voice of your spirit speaking. Mm -hmm. If... Yeah. And how do you test it? Is it producing a fruit of the kingdom? The presence of God, love, joy, peace. Remember in Philippians, the list that Paul gives us? He says, brethren, whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is just, of good report, think about those things. So those are the things we, we, we refocus our mind when we get into negativity. We refocus our mind to be filled with the, the voice of Jesus, the way he would talk as well as the content of his talk. What does his voice sound like? It brings peace. Remember, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and learn from me. You'll find rest for your souls. Your ma a mind at rest and peace is life, it says mm -hmm. in, in the sacred scripture. Mm -hmm. It brings, brings life to us. The, the, the third primary way that our spirit speaks to us is through the communion with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus. When we're in worship, when we're in worship, when we're in listening, quiet prayer, when we're in, in just one-on-one -on -one prayer with the presence of the Lord, face-to-face, -face, when we're pursuing that, sitting quietly, He speaks to us, doesn't He? Mm -hmm. Communion. Mm -hmm. That's one of the primary ways that I hear the voice of God and receive these teachings is when I am in communion with Him. And He begins to speak. How do you know it's Him? Fruit. Well, what emotions is it bringing? It, it, it will arise out of the inside of you. As opposed to the voice of the devil will intrude. He's an intruder. 
But the voice of your spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit, it will arise into your mind and your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will put to rest your mind. So the design-build concept is that God designed it and we are to co-labor with Him to build it. Amen? Mm -hmm. We can't sit around mentally and be mental slouches. When an intruder comes in, we have to bind him up and put him at the feet of Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Right? Mm -hmm. When we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, we, we have to take captive, it says, every thought, take it captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, I can take thoughts of love captive, and, and, it's, and it is obedient to Christ. But there are thoughts that aren't obedient to Christ that I need to make obedient to Christ yes. by removing them with their alternative, which is the Word of God. Speaking to it. Our goal is to build a godly castle, a godly fortress in our brain yeah. of thoughts and mental attitudes. It's not just a thought, it's also an attitude. We can have bad attitudes about things, can't we? Mm -hmm. And they're made up of, of a group of thoughts that cause us to have a bad attitude about something. So the, the Word of God is, is a fortress to be built in our minds. And we need to take time to look at the blueprint. Who's the blueprint? Mm -hmm. Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. And so First Peter says, gird up the loins of your mind. Be, being sober, vigilant, hope perfectly upon the grace that is being brought to you by the revealing of Jesus Christ to you. By the increase of of the discern of the learning and discerning of Christ. Gird up the loins. Isn't that interesting? That term? That's a that's a Bible code term. Doesn't make any sense in American English, does it? Gird up the loins of my mind? What are you, a Tarzan or something? And your mind is down here and it doesn't make any sense. But it does if you're an Old Testament scholar, because the first time it occurs is, is Passover. Gird up your loins in haste, for it is the Lord's Passover. Come out healthy with gold and silver. So Paul is using this term to, to saying we can pass over in our minds. Gird our minds up. Be sober. Be quick about it so that we can get out of the mental darkness and into the promises. And there's, there's a grace upon us to do that. I'd like to um, talk about how to clear the site. If we're going to design build, what's the first thing that happens? Yeah. Site preparation. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Paul says, demolish strongholds. He doesn't say just take them captive. He says, get God's bulldozer in and level, level that place in your mind. That's good. It might be how you look at, at love. It might be your success or failures at, at relationships. It, it, it might be an area like that. And it's just full of thinking that is not healthy. So you take the God's bulldozer and you level it. You level the enemy's constructs. And I'd like to talk about a couple of his constructs, and, and, and we use the term UGBs. Does anybody remember? Mm -hmm. UGBs. <coughs> ungodly belief systems. You have, and I have, ungodly belief systems that need to be demolished. Let me give you a couple examples. See if any of these ring with you. And they fall into different categories. Let's say, uh, uh, let's take a phys the physical ca ca category. I'm unattractive. I don't look nice. 
God shortchanged me. I'm stuck. I can't quite ever be a complete person. Friends, those are indications of an ungodly belief system, not a thought. It's thoughts that have been built into a system. And just like a UFO, God's word and the presence of his spirit and the voice of Christ will, will tear that thing apart. How about, let's just take identity. That's a big one these days, isn't it? How about, I should have been a boy, or I should have been a girl, or I should have been somebody else. Woo! God knew just when he made you and formed you in your mother's womb that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and he covered you in the matrix of your mother's womb. That's Psalm 139. He made you just the way you are. Not that he doesn't want to change you to change, but, but the substance he made you from, he made you to be you. How about, nobody will ever really appreciate me for who I really am. Nobody really understands how I feel. These are UGBs that are made up of a, it's the top of, a, of an iceberg. It's made up of a huge amount of things. Renewing the mind is having these things on the site removed slowly. God has a process of removing them so that you can design, you can build his design there. Amen. I'll just go through a couple of others. I've wasted my best years. I'm just giving some examples. How about this one? Trouble is normal in my life. <coughs> That's a good one for you, isn't it, honey? See, trouble's not normal. It's the devil. And it builds up a stronghold where we begin to look at things and we're wondering when the next trouble's going to happen. I'm, I, I'm, I have those kind of thoughts sometimes. It's like, why is this so hard, God? Well, it's not hard. It's supposed to flow like a river. But your thoughts are getting in the way. And then I'll just, I'll just give one more. I'll always have financial problems. <laughs> I'm not looking at anybody. I fall into some of these categories sometimes when those thoughts come in. I have to do something about them. I have to respond to them. I have to answer them because I have to answer them with something that is going to build up God's stronghold in my life. Yeah. Wise, careful building after demolition. So now how do we build once we've... I've just given you a few things there. What we do is we begin to build with declaration, affirmation, and scriptures that God has made important to you during your life. We build with the Word of God. The Bible says in Corinthians, no man can lay any other foundation other than the one that has already been laid, who is Jesus Christ. That's a direct quote of Scripture. So the foundation is Jesus Christ. He is speaking to us. All of these voices are coming to us from the Lord. And we have to remove the UGBs. We have to say, no, I'm identifying you. My radar is picking you up. Oot, oot, oot. Whoa. It doesn't belong in this area of my life. And how do we bring it down? How do we bring it down? By declaration and affirmation. Made regularly in your life. And because when you speak it out loud, guess who hears it? You. It's through the hearing of the word of God that faith comes. And that can include my own voice. So I can preach to myself. Amen. David preached to himself all the time. Why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Don't you remember all the things he's done? Yeah. David would, would, would build himself up and preach to his own soul. 
and encourage it in the Lord. So I would like to give you four key core values to design and build with. Four key core values that you're going to have. These are the four values that you have on your, on your architectural CAD program whenever you're designing anything in your brain. Amen. Four key core values for designing and building on the only foundation who is Christ. Number one, God is good all the time. Amen. Say it. God is good all the time. Now, when you think and start to think and wonder, God, this isn't good, it's not Him that's not good because He's good all the time. And that is a design feature of the building in your mind. So that's number one. Number two, nothing is impossible with God. Let's say it. Nothing. Nothing is impossible with God. Now, this is so important because we limit ourselves to who we think we are when God calls us to something or God wants to encourage us to do something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we respond, nope, that won't happen and I can't do that and I don't see that happening. Right. See, I've learned to shut up. <laughs> when my wife gives a good idea because I was raised to say no when anybody offered me anything out of the box. The first thing is my brain would kick in and go, no, that's, that won't work. We don't have the bu -bu 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 -bu. I don't have the bu -bu. Yeah. Before you start building, you need to say, nothing is impossible with my God. Amen. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying the way I'm approaching it is that anything can happen in my life with God that He wants. That's a design feature of God. Number three. Everything Everything, everything that is needed was accomplished at Calvary on the cross. Absolutely everything you will ever need, ever want, the world will ever need, the needs of the world, everything was accomplished on Calvary. There is nothing more. Jesus ended it by saying, it is finished. And he released the abundant ability for us to mentally be like him and say, everything I need is available because of Jesus' sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let your mind tell you it's not available. If it's from God, it's available. If it's an idea from God, if it's a calling from God. I used to not uh, like to speak in front of people. I can remember when I, when I first came to the Lord, I would, like, I, I would like stand in the checkout line and my hand would tremble and I'd like signing a check. What's my name? What am I? I was like freaking out. I, I didn't want to be in front of people. In, in that way. Well, flash forward 40 years. Yeah. With God, nothing is impossible. He called me. He has to equip me. He called me. Then it's not impossible with Him. He's going to get you there even if you miss the bus. He'll back up and get you on board and take you. Nothing's impossible. If we could only grab onto that, we'd be such a supernatural body of Christ on the earth that the nations would just come running to us. Oh, you have a bad economy? Not an issue. With God, nothing's impossible. Everything that I would accomplish for this nation, I, I don't know if you, you read the news recently, but a, a, a president of a South American nation was interviewed on national TV, newly elected president, and they said, well... Is it true that the first thing you said 
when you were elected was I'm going to seek the wisdom of God on all these things in my nation? And they said, well, what, what, kind, of, what kind of solution is that? He goes, <laughs> see? See? He's going to seek the wisdom of God for a whole nation. Just his little brain. He's going to get intuitions. He's going to have his conscience. He's going to have visions. He's going to have dreams. He's going to have substance. Things are going to come to him for on behalf of the nation. And here's the last one. Number four. You and I are ambassadors of Christ and carry his delegated regal authority and anointing. So everything that God is building is so that you can, can reflect him properly and be him and, and, and carry forth the important things he wants you to say and do. You have authority in your life. So what, what I'd like to do is close today with making some declarations. And I'm going to say them and then you can repeat them. Hallelujah. Does that sound good? Yes. Now remember, declarations and affirmations are the way God designed your brain to be built. Because he made the original declaration and affirmation on your mind. Amen. He said, be created. Have life. Right? He fashioned and formed it with his design, build, concept. So that's what we're speaking into. We're getting tools. After we discern now, the affirmations return us to God. What are we simply doing? God, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically what we're saying. I say, God, I agree with you on this matter. God, I agree with you in this area of my life. I'm not shutting it down. Yeah. We're affirming with the word of God. We're declaring the word of God. We're making regular, regularly an atmosphere of the word of God in our life and our home. And, and, and then the thoughts in the mind begin to speak the word of God. Isn't that awesome? Yes, this is already happening in your life, probably. But we can increase this so our response to situations is that the Word rises up. And my mind has the Word in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I have ten simple declarations. All right? So you can close your Bibles and put your notes away. These will all be on the... This will all be on the podcast. Hallelujah. Some of these maybe you never said to yourself before. I, I, I'm going to encourage you to speak your identity from the scripture. Not your identity from, from your life. Hallelujah. I, I read just, just before we begin, I, I, I won't say exactly what it was, but I recently had the experience of of, of two separate people who've known me since I was a lot younger saying, saying something about me that was um, and very complimentary and they said it not, not to me, to my wife. And neither of them are believers. And I thought, really? Wow, that's how they see me? That's awesome. I got a double witness. It was so encouraging that, 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 that I am not always who I think I am. But I am who the I am made me. God said, I'm the I am. So just to be encouraged. That's why we need one another. I can, I can look at you and, and tell you things and encourage you in, in ways and you can do to one another. That's how the body of Christ is built. We encourage and exhort one another and tell each other who we really are. Not just by our eyes, but by Jesus, the, the Son, speaking to us in our spirit. 
and it rising up and sharing that with someone. You could just transform somebody's day with one word. I'm not talking flattery. I'm talking the Word of God. So here, here's the first one. Let me read it. Oh, it's two. Each of these have two little scriptures. I am a lover of God. My chief aim and goal of life is to worship God and to bring glory to Him. How does that sound? Is that good? Let's say it first. I am a lover of God. My chief aim and goal of life is to worship God and to bring Him glory. Right, that's the Westminster Catechism, basically. Here's another one. I am a lover of people. <laughs> Come on. Woo, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I live to engage in the journey of learning to love where I expect nothing in return. You don't have to repeat that, but I'll just explain it. That's it. We're learning. Here's another one for us. I am generous. I am generous. Oh, that's awesome. I live to give. I live to give. It's better to give than to receive. It's better to give than to receive. Amen. Amen. Now, here's a good one. I am an empowerer. I am an empowerer. What does that mean? I live to help others fulfill their destinies, dreams, and visions, and desires. I live to give, give energy and, and encouragement and oomph to other people's desires and destinies, not just my own. I'm an empowerer. I have the ability in God to empower you to fulfill what God's called you to do. Here's another one. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Amen. As I abide in Christ, I bear fruit. Yes. Much fruit, Jesus said. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. Hallelujah. You will bear fruit in everything you put your hands to that's from God. Yes. Here's a good one. I am greatly favored. I am greatly favored. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. You are highly favored by God. And that favor causes you to brighten the lives of other people. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll just do maybe one more. I am a creator of good and godly environments wherever I go. Yeah. yeah. I'm a creator of godly environments wherever I go. You're standing in the checkout line. There's a bad atmosphere. The, the poor teller just looks like somebody ran over him with a truck. And the person in front of you has no money. You create an atmosphere there. You begin to worship God. Lord, what, is there anything you want me to do here besides worshiping you and flooding the, and, and letting the emanation of Christ come out of my belly? Out of your belly shall flow streams of living water. Jesus said, you just go, I I'm a lover of people. I love these people. I'm not in a rush to get to the express line. Wait a minute. I'm loving these people. And then something happens. God might say, pay that woman's bill. God might say, just tell that cash register she's doing a great job and smile at her. It changed her whole life. You are a creator of good and godly environments and atmospheres. I live to fill the earth with Christ's goodness, righteousness, and the glory of God. <laughs> Yeah, Good. I'll just close with one scripture. See, so these are things that kill the UGBs, yeah. right? So some of you might have felt one or two of them go, oh boy, I need to really do that one, right? That's because there's UGBs flying around. So, so declarations and affirmations are beautiful, and, and they're things that you can hear yourself say. Amen. Hallelujah. So here's Acts 20, 32, which I'll leave you with today. This is... And now I commend you to God 
and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are being sanctified, returning. And now I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are being sanctified and returning to the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.